procrastinators to another episode of I'd Rather Be Motivated, hosted with my co-host David Fleming and myself, Scott O'Green. We are the duders that bring you I'd Rather Be Drawing.com. Um, so at the top of the show, why don't we uh, say who we are and where you can find us. David, when we're not here on our um, YouTube channel, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me at Art of Mr. Fleming uh, on Instagram and Mr. David Fleming on the old Facebookers. Very cool. For myself on Instagram, Mr. Green Draws, Mr. Green Draws, and then on Facebook, I'd rather be drawing. So check it out. You'll find uh, works from kind of both of us there, and, and links for everything and stuff that we've been seeing. So I hope to hope you check it out. And also, I just want to say at the top of the show, down below there is a link for a newsletter that you can sign up for. Um, we don't require firstborn or anything like that. It's just your email address. And uh, for the midway through October slash October newsletter, we're going to draw, we're going to put all those names in a hat of the people who are signed up for the newsletter and draw for a free t-shirt. And I'd rather be drawing t-shirts. So uh, if you get a chance, please help us out and sign up for the newsletter. And we'll keep you posted on uh, free giveaways and new books of ours that are coming out and where you can find us at conventions. So um, besides that, what else has been going on with you, David? Um, well, uh, honestly, just gearing up for the old Inktobers, uh, just trying to do a bunch of pencils. I found that I'm most successful when I've just kind of like spent September kind of s sketching and doodling out I either ideas or like actual pencils like I'm doing here, like these little guys. Um, cool. I'm going to use Inktober to uh, ink the old comic, but every couple of days I'm going to take a break and just do a fun little doodle. So then what do we have? Pencil timber or sketch timber? Yeah, there's a bunch of different ember words for them. For People are trying. They really haven't gotten that one nailed down yet, though, have they? They really have not. Because no. um, I don't really know who they are. So I don't really know who to contact. One of the big mysteries for why people get all up in arms about the rules. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, because they might say something. They, they might. What if are they, they messaged you personally on your Instagram and told you you were not following the rules? Oh, and then you'll get a ticket. Jake Parker yeah. will send the. Jake Parker will send a ticket. will send the Ink Ninjas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you also, know. I want to say uh, real quick at the top of the show, happy birthday, Ronnie. Um, I saw that uh, on Facebook, and I hope you're having a good one, brother. Um, so yeah, before we get started on uh, talking about um, drawing challenges, specifically Inktober, and take me to your leader Tuesday, uh, we're gonna commence with the art check, which. It's just a quick run through of progress, problems, and plans, the things that uh, David and I have been experiencing over the last week since the last time we talked, and to help keep each other accountable to our art goals. So uh, do you want to head it off, David? Yeah, I, I'm down. We can do that. Oh. All right. What's your uh, progress from last week? Uh, I don't actually remember. You're the one who was always writing it down, so I'm going to call you out and ask you if you remember what I wrote down for mine. You don't remember? Oh, my gosh. Okay, so what do we have here? We have... As I consult the Necronomicon, you were going to pencils on page three, pencils on a school drawing. Hmm. I forget what that was. Something a commission for somebody at school, or I don't think that's real. I think you wrote that down wrong. Oh, shut up! <laughs> pencils on some other drawing you're wanting to get. Uh, was it my Batman one that I was doing? Was it a giveaway for something at school or something? A charity thing? I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe it had to do with the the, con, the old con that I went to. No, but I did that night week before, didn't I? Yeah, that was something else. I don't know. You want to get pencils on page three and then pencils yeah. on some sort something of... Something else. Something. Well, I did. I don't know. Well, and then the other thing was... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's it. That's all you really had. That's it? Yeah, you, I don't know. We, we kind of talked briefly about it under uh, the, uh, the I'd Rather Be Drawing heading. Um, we didn't really have anything I suggested possibly promoting the newsletter. I wasn't sure if you picked up on that or not. So mm. that one was a bit more iffy. So the main thing was just kind of, I think, prepping for Inktober and, and pencils on page three. I don't remember what the other... I, I don't recall my shorthand on there. So, <laughs> so well, so what did you actually get done? Uh, I did it. I mean, I got it. It sounds like I got it all done then. I mean, I had your, oh, maybe it was me mentioning the commission I had for you. I guess. I don't know. It says I know that was on my list. So, well, uh, cool. Because I did that. 
Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, by the way. The old little animation done. Am I spoiling? Am I supposed to say anything? Is that a, is that a surprise? No, it's fine. Help me out with uh, an animation at the beginning of my Read More Comics um, line of what line? Uh, playlist here on our channel. Uh, I have a. Um, what am I trying to say here, David? Uh, just a weekly show that you do that I help sort of make a little bit of animation for. Thank you. Enough said. Anyway, go right ahead with your progress, man. Anything <laughs> else? <laughs> but yeah, I did. I. I worked on that. I got that done. Uh, the week was kind of crazy, actually. I don't know if I'm skipping to problems here, but uh, I, I'm actually really surprised I got everything that I wanted to get done because I did get the work that I wanted to get done on that page. I got page three done, and I've already kind of started playing with the roughs of page four, and I've got um, a few panels ready to roll because one a day in Inktober is my goal. I'm using Inktober to ink the old comic bookers, like I said earlier. And uh, the goal is to try to do one a day on the comic. And um, if it's like a spread, because actually my first page is a spread, uh, I'll do it like in two days or something. Like I'll do like half of the spread and crop it in for a photo and then do the other half of the spread or something like that. But um, I'm jumping all over the place, the progress and plans, aren't I, man? Yep. I feel like I'm like not a one track mind today. I, I want to just kind of like talk about all of it. So it's like, I know we both kind of mentioned before just kind of being in weird states with everything. So we'll see what happens on this art check. But anyways, uh, I got that done. I got that page done. I got that other one done. And I got some rather random pencils done too. I've got, I've got a pretty good little, uh, little buffer of pencils that I'm ready to ink and make happen and turn into something rad for Inktober. So I am excited about that. I'm trying to play with this thing that I'm penciling here too because – I'm just bad at drawing females, so I'm trying to do more of it. You know, you got to do what you can't do so you can start doing it better. There you go. Makes sense to me. Some kind of lesson I try to teach my students. Some kind of lesson, I don't know. Some kind of lesson. Um, yeah, I think, honestly, though, like, that was really all I had. I was just really, I was trying, I knew I remember that I knew I was going to be busy. And I set a pretty light goal for myself knowing that I was because I didn't want to, like, stress myself, especially leading up into Inktober, like, knowing that, like, this month's about to get crazy. Crazy. I knew I wasn't trying to do anything too super crazy. So I think I pretty much uh, made some good progress on those on the few things that I said I knew I wanted to do. Nice. I'll just go ahead and stop babbling and pass it over to you. All right. Um, so... Bit of a crazy week as well. What I had written down was writing on the script, open to start thumbnails in one capacity or another. Um, oh, design my next uh, fan art and promote the newsletter and my next episode of Read More Comics. So I did a little promoting of the newsletter giveaway. Um, I, which we actually, I think got one or two people that signed up for it. So that was cool. <laughs> Sweet. Um, let's see here. <clears throat> I got my last episode of read more comics out, <clears throat> which was a fun one. We had, uh, uh, middle West, which I've been a huge fan of from Scotty young writing and Jorge Corona on art. Um, I had one Aaron Franklin, who's kind of a local person out here, a creator, of all different kinds and she makes these things called sculpture comics and the one i had was like this big and each scene would kind of fold out which was really rad and then our first big two contribution on read more comics was sean gord murphy's white knight so don't watch it if you haven't read it because there might be a few spoilers um but anyway so i got that episode out and enjoyed that one um, I didn't really like, I was kind of actually planning on with my time today at, uh, the drawing thing, working on the design for my next fan art thing. Instead of working on that, I wanted to do something that was a little bit more just fun for myself, uh, exercise my own creativity instead of uh, using fan art pieces to make something. So that's why I'm using, utilizing Take Me Cheerleader Tuesday. Um, that kind of gave me a jumping off point and I'll talk more about that in a bit. So I'm working on the pencils for that one and enjoy where I am with that. I got some good writing done on the script. However, where I came up short this week 
Uh, I didn't I didn't get to thumbnailing yet. I haven't started that process. It's still just been writing, but um, I'm a slow writer for sure, as you can tell, and I get just little bits done here and there. So hopefully I can start kind of making that stuff a bit more visual soon. But that's all my progress there. Did you already go through your, your problems or? I mean, not all of them because I realized I was. And okay. I just kind of realized I was like in every different place at once in my brain. So I kind of stopped myself. Sure. So uh, what uh, did you Oh my God. <laughs> I just had like an explosion on my pencil here. And I'm trying to like pick up the pieces of my lead here while this is all happening. Oh my gosh. You pick up the pieces uh, <laughs> while I talk about my problems. I yeah, you just go. I'm, I'm having a problem here. So I'm having a hard time talking about my problems. No problem. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, busy week. Uh, a good part of the problem was this last weekend. I went camping, uh, which was awesome. I haven't actually been able to do a whole lot of that since I've lived out here in Washington. But with one of my childhood friends who moved out here, he's definitely big into camping. So he had organized this quite a while ago, and it was exciting to go. And we ended up uh, getting to go visit a kind of World War II uh, naval outpost with these giant guns and underwater, or not underwater, but underground bunkers and stuff built. It looked like something out of Storm on the Beaches of Normandy or or um, the place where Captain America was created or trained or something like that. It was really fascinating. You could really climb up around in it. So I'm glad I did that. But on a weekend where I had the whole weekend off, um, that's a lot of art time that I didn't get a chance to get done. But it was a pretty good life enriching thing. So um, I'm OK with that. Um, however, leading up to that, it was a little bit stressful because our pet, we couldn't find a house sitter for, so Stacy was going to have to stay, which may have ended up being a good thing because uh, Wookie, uh, who is our pet, um, has been a little bit ill. He's doing pretty good right now, but with little critters like that, sometimes that can be a quick progression downhill, and so that's been a little bit stressful. He's a, a member of the family, and uh, he traveled with us here from Kansas City. So, um, yeah, yeah. So we were kind of worried about that and trying to get that all figured out. And then just my back nodding up, which I kind of deal with back stuff all the time, a little bit here and there. Um, well, pretty much all the time to one degree or another. Sometimes a little bit worse, sometimes not so bad. Um, but by the end of last week, kind of going into the camping trip, it was not not pretty good which was just making simple things like sitting at a table a little bit more difficult than normal. But uh, I think camping may have actually helped that out because with all the walking and kind of hiking around, I think I was able to kind of loosen that up a little bit. But sacrificed a bit of sleep, <laughs> but that's okay. Like I said, it was good time, so not complaining. And these aren't really problems, you know. The My animal thing, and that's kind of stressing out my wife and everything it was a bit of a bummer, but... Things are looking pretty good as far as all that stuff goes. But uh, that's really all the little things I dealt with this last week. How about you? Okay, I, got, I'm, I'm, I got my pencil back together. We're, we're good oh, to go. Yeah. All right. Uh, so, yeah, um, storms are coming, right? So uh, this weekend we had a bunch of storms that were predicted. And um, because of that, and it was homecoming weekend, uh, I had they had to, like, reschedule all of, like, the sporting events and games and stuff. And uh, so the Friday night football game became a Thursday night football game. And that was after a morning of me um, missing my alarm somehow and getting to school like 15 minutes late. And so I had like a completely off, just like one of those days where you're like, cannot catch up to it for some reason. Mm -hmm. And then that happened on top of it. And then it was like, oh, and by the way, the football game is tonight. And it was just like all this on top of things. Uh, it made Thursday just like this crazy day for me of just like not being able to catch up or do anything or get anything done. And then it just like bled into the weekend. And then like uh, we celebrated one of my friend's 30th birthday parties. But then like that, we stayed out super late and then had a pretty crazy night with that. And it was just like all these things just piling up and just like could not focus. Got a bunch of stuff done early in the week and then just got absolutely nothing done after that. The later in the week stuff was just not just abysmal in terms of like getting anything done and feeling good about it. Mm -hmm. So I did not get quite as much done as I was hoping to get done with my Inktober preparation stuff, but I am a little bit where I want to be. Just not where I want to be, if that makes sense. Yep. Getting there, but wanting to be a little further. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. For sure. 
I just hate those like off. Yeah, like when you just can't get back on it. Yeah, it was just insane how, like even today wasn't like, I was like a little bit back because we like went to bed mostly early last night, but it was just like, man, I just cannot even explain the feeling of just like being so foggy that you're like, okay, I got free time. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Uh... Oh, my time's up. Okay, I did nothing. So that was cool. Sounds a little frustrating. Yeah, especially when you just like know just how limited the work you or the time you have to get like certain work done, and then like you're like, crap, I just wasted another whatever of that time. And I just hate that feeling of like, I know I need to be productive right now, but what do I do? I know when you've kind of budgeted your time and you're like, okay, for this half hour, for this hour. I'm going to get my stuff done. And then you get to that point and then like a thing happens and you're like, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. No, I budgeted that time. Now what am, when am I going to get that thing done? And then you're like, I'm just not. <laughs> not working out for me. So yeah, I had a couple of those days yet last week. But I just like, as a part of like what I do for drawing challenges, I always try to like find a way to build up some kind of buffer of, of something so that like if anything goes wrong, I know that I've like prepared for it, you know? I'd say that's pretty good advice. But I definitely didn't get as much as I was hoping I would have by the end of it all. Also, I feel like I keep creeping over. Like where I'm naturally wanting to sit right now tonight is definitely not underneath my camera. And I did not do a good job of getting that where it needs to go. Sorry, I'll try to scream at you once in a while if it starts. Yeah, it's like I can just tell that I'm like drifting, and like uh, just like you know, I'm just gonna like just her eyes right here. I'll just drift with it if it starts to happen. <laughs> and then we're on a boat. It's just oh, sorry. I just need to move my actual chair that I'm sitting in. I feel like uh, Red said a good name. I think this is one of the better names I've heard. Said September can be referred to as Prep Timber. Because uh, that's true. Everyone always seems to be using it as a prep for something. So I like that one. I like it, Ronnie. And then he said, Take Me Cheerleader Tuesday is a great challenge. He's been uh, keeping up with that one as well. So we'll talk about that soon. Anyway, so are we on to plans or what do you think? Yeah, I think we're already on to plans. Ronnie is playing about everything. Okay, I feel like we talked to doing over each other, and I'm not sure if I actually heard what you just said. It's all right. I was making fun of you. It felt uh, like cool. I wouldn't worry about it. Cool, cool, so cool. anyway, um, do you want to talk about uh, your plan for this week or what? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah man. Kind of know mostly uh, that it's Rock Inktober, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, basically I'm doing a page or doing a panel a day. First page I'll do in two days because it's not doesn't have any panels. It's just a spread. Um, I'm also, and this is really fun because I really want this challenge because this is like one of those things we can just use this to transition kind of more or less, you know, I'm not, I'm not stealing your thunder. No, you're doing great, buddy. <laughs> but, um, I always like, if I do a challenge, it's something practical. Like mm -hmm. when I participated in, um, March of Robots a couple years ago, it was to concept characters for the story as robots because I knew that the comic I was gonna write was gonna have robots in it. And then like Inktober, I always want it to be something productive, if not to practice a technique or some kind of thing, uh, or to have something afterwards, uh, tons of original drawings or things to make prints out of or whatever of what I've done in the past. Uh, but th lately I've been using it as a way to ink uh, comic pages. And so I'm gonna go all the way through to completion with them. Like I'm gonna scan them in after I finish a whole page and actually add the gray tones, like do my screen tone work too. So I will post the inks separately. And then when I finish an entire page, I will then scan in and spend the day screen toning and kind of doing the digital cleanup so that it, when I post it, it will be like the final page. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's one of those things where like if I'm gonna spend the whole month kind of killing myself, I want something from it in the end. And so So then where do you think like just to be more specific, then where do you think you'll be 
or where do you want to be by the time we talk next week? Uh, by the time we talk next week, let's see, I will have done it would be, well, technically it'd be six days of it, right? Yeah, or so. So yeah. I should be through the first page and then drawing second page. I should be on the like probably not posted yet, but working on the screen tones for page two. So you're thinking page one should be done. Yep. Working on two. Definite, definitely one done and working on two. Cool. Maybe do a little newsletter promotion this week? Yes, actually. Uh, that's It's been my plan all through Inktober to like talk about the Inktober giveaway promotion thing. Very cool. Were you joking earlier? I feel like I picked up on that after it was too late that like you wanted me to start that already and I didn't. No, no, I wasn't. Um, I don't think so. Oh, okay. I have some bad jokes. No, last week we just talked about something to fill in the slot for the IRBD part. So we kind of talked about that, but I, I don't think we like nailed it down. So okay, yeah. Just making sure I wasn't blowing it. <laughs> no, man. You did good. You did good, pal. Anything uh -huh. else you're aiming to get done? That seems like pretty a good uh, amount of stuff. I mean, yeah, it's going to be a pretty busy month, man. I'm I'm actually excited. You'd think I'd be like, ah, oh, here it goes. But, like, I'm just really stoked to – I haven't gotten in the zone to dig in like this in a long time. So I'm just really excited to, like, get in and dig in. Very cool. Well, I am jealous. I am not at a good point to participate in Inktober this year. Like you, I've used it to concept stuff in the past to uh, create – works to sell and also to like ink a book um but with me writing a book right now i strongly think that for me if i started to get into inktober and um that fun but stress of that and everything and keeping up i would want to do it right and do one every day of course and i think that would sideline my current project further so um i'll do some drawings here and there because uh, that's what i do is draw and ink um, so post them and everything, but excited to see what everybody's doing. But like you had talked about, David, I, I don't think our challenges are something that should take you away from the projects you should be working on. If you can use them to help you, that's perfect. Um, for this particular one, I just, uh, I'm, I don't got time for it right now. So uh, I'm just not going to worry about it too much. It's a little bit of a load off this year. Um, and it'll be kind of nice to have this time of year also to wrap up the writing and the storytelling and, and be kind of um, inspired by the sights and sounds of everything going on to go into my October story. So I'm just going to kind of let that happen and, and all of that. So I'm sad to not be participating in the in Inktober, but excited to see what everyone's going to have going on. And like I said, I'm always drawing something in ink here or there. So I'm always on the outskirts. Um, but let's see here. As far as the comic, it's really, I, I want to just kind of start gearing, like really just focusing in on that. We have a three pronged effect with everything, but when it comes down to it, um, we're wanting to make comics. So I'm really wanting to get that thing tightened up and uh, ready to go. So I'm just going to kind of focus all my energy on that this next week and see if I can make anything Get some good headway budged on that. So I'm just going to put on this October with an exclamation point. I'm currently working on a, an entry for Take Me to Your Leader Tuesday for tomorrow. Um, and then promoting the newsletter. And I do have – see, this is what I mean. I try to focus on one thing, but there's always other stuff. <laughs> um, I want to help promote the newsletter, which isn't a huge thing, um, and the T-shirt giveaway. Uh, and then I do have my episode of Read More Comics this week. Uh, that'll make episode seven of coming out religiously on Wednesdays and everything. Um, I am going to do it in chunks of seven. I kind of decided and then do like a week in between to give me uh, an opportunity to uh, like you've given me that new piece that I need to put in and implement, kind of tighten things up and also just to kind of read more books. Um, it's uh, a little bit daunting. I've been keeping up so far, but some of the books that I want to read and put under the microscope for this, are a little bit longer and to squeeze, you know, three of those in every time is a little bit tough. So yeah, that's real. 
Yeah, so I want to have a little bit of a buffer on that. It, it won't be something where I'm gone too long. So hopefully if uh, in the week that I'm off, you know, people can check out ones before or catch up on them or, or whatever. But uh, it'll still be an ongoing thing. So no worries there. I think I'm just going to kind of have it in chunks of seven at a time uh, to give myself a week off and kind of catch up on that. But I will have to finish the one for this week. So uh, promote newsletter, episode of Read More Comics, and then just focus on October. As well as wrap up this guy, which I've been talking about it and, and dancing around it for a while now. Take me to your leader Tuesday. Every Tuesday, a lot of people are posting videos like Red um, has, and uh, a lot of people are doing drawings on Instagram and stuff like that. But it's basically on Tuesdays, and you don't have to wait for a certain month. It can be every single Tuesday um, or a month at a time or whatever you want. But I draw a picture of an alien. So in whatever capacity... Um, for a couple way back when, I was doing window painting to kind of like learn window painting, which I'd like to get back on top of. Um, I was painting aliens on my sliding glass door and using that. But uh, we're seeing a lot of cool stuff from people out there. Um, and uh, it was invented by Marshall Lee of Donkey Jaw Projects and Scott Circland of Cirqueworks. They both invented this drawing challenge. And uh, they... They've been making really cool videos for the past few weeks and everything. So search that hashtag, take me to your leader Tuesday, and participate. Throw up an alien on, on Tuesdays and uh, see what happens. But uh, that's what I'm working on, and I find it to be a pretty cool drawing challenge because it's one, Inktober is pretty intense for a good reason where you really just focus on that for a month straight. Take me to your leader Tuesday I think is cool because it's a once-a-week thing where you can make a video to go along with it. So it's a way to kind of create content uh, for your channel. If you're like, you know, I need something, you can use that as a at least one weekly video. And it's a way to kind of dip your toe in, but still kind of focus on your other projects. Have something on the side that's a little bit fun and not what you're working on to kind of um, get out of it, but also kind of a regimented like every Tuesday. So I think it's a good thing, especially for folks like me who are unable to participate this year in Inktober. We still have a little bit of fun with Take Me to Your Leader Tuesday. Every time you say that, your voice gets a little sad. I know. Inktober. In participating in Inktober. I know. Well, I love ink so much, I just want to dip my hands in it all over my face and start drawing with it and everything. So. Yep, so uh, I'm going to head out. <laughs> Was that weird? Is that weird? Did I get weird? <laughs> Crap. Sorry. You've done it again. Oh my gosh, I'm sitting here trying to draw the pattern on her like shirt and I'm literally about to throw a pencil. <laughs> I've had trouble with the fourth arm of this alien. I understand. Yeah, I well, it's only got two, man. <laughs> <laughs> only two arms? Weakling. Right? Whoa, 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 whoa. So yeah, man, I'd like to get this done and post it for tomorrow. There's no big stipulations on, you know, if it's painted or drawn or penciled or, or inked or anything. So you don't even have to worry about the rules. So about Inktober, man, tell me the rules of that. I'm uh, not well, familiar. I've never heard of it. Uh, if you've never heard of it, which is like insane, uh, Inktober is the idea that you create 31 ink drawings in the month of October, uh, one a day as a challenge to push yourself and the limits of your inking, your ability to ink and your ability to, I think it's like what the biggest part of it is like your ability to like brainstorm and come up with that many original drawings too. I think it's like a pretty big part of the challenge. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's my favorite part of the challenge that makes it like a one worth participating in. But what about future people and young folk who don't even use ink and put ink on paper? but well, they do all of their inking digitally. What are they supposed to do for the whole month? Wait for digital November in November. Or. I'm just kidding. Or just, just do it anyways, because. Participate because who cares? And it's the same, even though it's different. And, yeah. I mean, you, you really, you really pointed that one in a direction there, man. I was steering it. I know. <laughs> I, I like how you said the new generation. Like implying All these young kids with their computers and Google downloads. These fan dangled kids trying to digitally inktober. 
with their Napsters and their. Did you say Napster? <laughs> yeah. Because you just showed how old you were by saying that. Hey, Napster still exists. Does it? I don't. I don't know if it exists. That's like saying uh, My MySpace still exists, even though it does because it doesn't. <laughs> no, it's like a real thing. It says it on my phone. It says Napster. Hmm. Do you have one of those ones you get from Walmart that like the old has the big button for the old people? <laughs> it's got a rotary turnstile on it. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. on, on a cell phone. <laughs> they have to install it on the back. I don't know yeah. how that works. So. I don't know why people think these are so easy to carry around. Hey, what's up, Tyler Blake? Nice seeing you. Love seeing your 100 days of making comics, man. Hope all is going well with your comic. I know that you've got a cool channel that you've been building. Um, I haven't got a chance to see it, but I think you had uh, just released an episode on coloring on your comic, so I'm excited to check that out. Sorry, just checking up here in the uh, chat. Yeah, Thank you guys for joining in with us. We do appreciate it. As you can see, we're on top of it today. We're making sure we got the art check done because even when you're not quite feeling it, we find it important to check in. But, yeah, anything else going on with your uh, Inktober getting ready for or we pretty much nailed it? I mean, like, I, I think you were on the right track there. We were talking about sort of like, what is Inktober and what about uh, if I don't do this and what about if I don't do that? And is it only considered Inktober if I ink directly on the paper and all these other kind of things? Uh, I think the heart of most drawing challenges is to join in for a month of trying to make tons and tons of drawings in that month and really push the limits of whatever media or subject matter you have. I think most other drawing challenges and why they're different too is they're usually like a subject matter, kind of like yours is that you're doing now. It's more of a uh, challenge to use a specific theme or subject to kind of push yourself. Mm -hmm. I think I love Inktober because it's about the media. But even on that end, like, man, I would still consider you joining in on Inktober even if you joined in with pencil the whole time and just like did your thing with pencil and really enjoyed the, the challenge of trying to do 31 drawings. Because I think that's really the heart of it is taking a challenge, making it practical for yourself, Kind of like you said, not halting, like what you're working on at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if a drawing challenge is derailing, you know, your aspirations, and something's wrong, I feel like. But you know, I think both of us. I don't remember for sure for you, but I know the first year that I did Inktober, it was pretty daunting to do that. And honestly, I was not in a place where I could, I couldn't physically do 31 ink drawings in 31 days. So what I would do is just pencils one day, inks on those pencils the next day. So I guess technically I failed in October, but I certainly didn't feel like I failed anything. I felt like I leveled up as an artist that year, and by the time the next year rolled around, I felt comfortable to really give it a go. Um, so yeah, I, I and this year I'm like I said I'm going to post a drawing or two that's done in ink, and I'm going to put the Inktober hashtag on it because. It's fun to participate. I don't think there's anything wrong with that if you're not doing it on every single day and you're just hopping on the bandwagon of the hashtag. Yeah, who cares? It's a fun community. Art is awesome. If you can participate one day out of 31 days, then throw that Inktober hashtag on there and see if it draws a crowd. Yeah, I, I'm pretty positive, actually, that the first time I did it, I did uh, pencil one day, ink the next. So I did every other day. So I did 15 ink drawings the first time I participated. Mm-hmm. Which I think is a great way to go if you're kind of worried about being able to get that many in there. I was trying to convince a friend at work. He's been wanting to get uh, – he used to do graffiti stuff back in the day, but still enjoys, like, doing it, like, the lettering in his in a sketchbook. And he just yeah. finally got a sketchbook. And I've been trying to convince him to do Inktober and do a sketch a day or, or 100 days of graffiti or – or any of those type things. I mean, yeah. I see actually some pretty cool people I follow who do that kind of thing. They did like uh, lettering challenges and things like that, like quotes a day or like a, a cool letter of an alphabet in the, in the month. And then by the end of the month, they've like made their own like sort of like custom fonts or some kind of thing like that. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And when you start saying and the, the beautiful thing I think about drawing challenges is they really push um, what a little bit a day or a little bit at a time, how that can really add up to show you uh, a big change. So 
you do a uh, take me to your leader Tuesday, you know, you participate in that for a month or a couple months or over the course of a year, all of a sudden you've got like a whole cast of characters that you can do sci-fi comic with or a bunch of art you can sell at comic con or just a bunch of stuff you're proud of. Maybe fill the sketchbook with nothing but aliens. That's pretty awesome. You know, if you're doing uh, 30 minutes a day for a hundred days of making comics, you can see how 30 minutes might not sound like a whole lot, but for a hundred consecutive days, that stuff adds up. And then when you see that, then it gets you excited to keep going. And I think those are kind of, uh, I don't know, the uh, spirit behind a lot of art challenges. It's, it's fun to participate in community and everything, but I think that they are kind of usually designed or with the goal to become better, you know, and it just kind of creates a game out of getting better instead of just calling it homework. You know? I actually like that that thought or that idea, which it just it creates a game out of getting better. I mean, that's all it is and all the rules and everything. Those are just kind of for yourself. Cause like we said, yeah. And even public accountability and stuff like that, like who's really going to stop and, and really like take you to task on what's going on. It's really about, you know, the rules for yourself. If you, David have decided I'm going to use these three pens and nothing else, well, if you cheat, well, you're the only one that knows, but that's important to you, you know, so. Right. I don't know. It's fun to make a game out of it. You could probably give your students uh, uh, an assignment that's just, I want you to do a drawing once a day, every day. And they'd be like, oh, but you start saying Inktober and creating some fun out of it and, and get a drawing prompt list and all this stuff. And it creates a game of learning. We know that we're doing it, but why not? It's fun. Oh no, definitely. Yeah, I super agree with that. I, I am I am sort of doing it with my students this semester, so I am pretty stoked about that. The oh, uh, really? the art my art club has decided that that's that's what they want to make like the focus of this sort of this month, like to get their uh, their points. So we have like a we did we made a star chart this year. There's like mm -hmm. a point system of like participating in whatever we decide is the challenge for the month gets you like a star on the star chart. And then I bought a bunch of um, Hobby Lobby clearance pins and things. Nice. And I'm going to like let them like legitimately like when you were in elementary school and you got your points every day and you got your cheesy little gift at the end of the month. Like, but it's going to be like rad, like art supplies that I've been buying all month. Very cool. So they decided that they wanted Inktober to be their thing that they got for points this month. So, And we kind of went through the same thing. Some were like, oh, but I don't ink. And they were like, oh, and I was like, guys, it's 31 drawings. Like, I'm challenging you guys to make 31 drawings this month. That's that's the challange. I know, right? We're calling it Inktober. It's a clever name. It's a cool looking sticker. Jake Parker rocks. <laughs> Whatever you want and shut up, kids. <laughs> Mostly it's a cool looking sticker. <laughs> Yeah, man, I was seeing all his Inktober art snacks boxes and all that stuff, and it's like, oh, I wish I was participating, but... Yeah, I got the art snacks box one year, and it was really cool to do it that way in the, in the sketchbook that it comes with and stuff. Mm -hmm. That was fun, because then, yeah, all of the uh, what are you going to use, which is kind of built in. Yeah, it was a really cool thing. I think I did a thing where I was like, I was only allowed to use what came in the box. I couldn't remember. Mm -hmm. That was a fun year. That was my last year of doing it like as a casual just make drawings to sell at, at convention like it was almost like a, that's how i restocked for at convention time kind of thing yeah yeah you get a whole bunch of inking done and then you kind of have stuff to color yeah exactly a lot of my prints and things for that year came out of the stuff that i did for inked over that year and that was like a cool way of, for me to make it practical that year was just like knowing that i needed to restock and get myself back in the zone with with my drawing stuff i think I did a thing that might've been my year where I was like every third drawing was an original character. And then everything in between was just fun little like uh, fan art pieces and stuff. Oh yeah. 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 I did one one year that was a lot of fun where I used it to ink a comic, but then like every few days or I forget exactly how I did it every two days or something like that. I did a fun sketchbook drawing of October, my character. So I was inking my Isabel Crane comic at the time, but I still wanted to do just a fun drawing. So interspersed that. And in. so, the, yeah, all kinds of unlimited ways you can kind of tailor something to be what you need or just what you want. This is a 
feels like a really weird night here. Usually we can't shut up, but I feel like we're really kind of like we're going in circles here, man. Well, I don't know about you. Like for me too, like I'm excited, uh, you know, I, my comics on my mind like all the time now. So it's cool getting in on the art check and everything, but it's right, probably right. topic of discussion, all that, I, you know, just want to make my comic. I want to get rolling on it. Oh, another thing that I think is kind of fun and noteworthy to talk about. Um, uh, one of my goals for a while now on here is uh, to table at a convention again. I haven't really done it since I moved from Kansas City. Um, from what I could find and, and and getting ready for, which is this anthology book that's coming in, I did want to have that. And now I'll have like several comic books on the table, which has been important to me. But um, I haven't been able to get into the little one here in Bellingham because it's a small one, but they've got a lot of good people. So it's hard to get into that one, I'm finding. And then the only other ones so far that I've known a whole lot about are like the giant ones down in Seattle. Anyway, I'm excited to say that I'm finally going to be tabling. I have a table booked um, in the spring at Planet Comic Con, actually. I'm going to come home to say hey to my mom and family and then come table next to David at Planet Comic Con so we can get to, I'd rather be drawing in one place at the same time. Uh, there might even be a couple of folk, uh, folk or two, um, some folks from uh, the 100s that might be there. I think Samurai Ox, I thought I had seen a post about him tabling at Planet Comic Con, so maybe we can do some kind of fun uh, video event there um, or even just kind of a drink and draw one of the nights and kind of get some socializing going on. But That would be pretty rad. I'm really excited for that. So I, I don't know, like my mind's just kind of focused on on these things at hand, you know, getting the comic ready. I'm excited for that too, because that's spring. So my timeline for October has kind of gotten pushed back. Obviously it's not something that's going to be coming out for this Halloween, but with March and the end of March, that kind of gives me a timeline where I could have a good chunk of this book done by then and have a good idea on um, when the Kickstarter will be going on and everything. So it'll be cool to kind of have, and I was even kind of thinking ahead that if I do, since I will have a bunch of pages done, I could probably do like a 10 page preview uh, ash can that I can have printed and give away to people as I talk to them. And, um, and maybe even have like, you know, Kickstarter coming in June or, or whatever, you know, however many months away I am, but be able to have something concrete for that to really be able to show. It won't be the finished thing, but I'm excited to have that as a uh, uh, kind of a deadline, I guess, you know, I do. I do know. I do know. So, yeah, man, thanks for helping me uh, get that table situation figured out. I'm really excited to come there. And and uh, like I said, I got to get some things together as far as banners and stuff like that. But then I feel like once I get that done again, um, yeah, come back with my newfound knowledge and start this tabling thing. Get that yeah. going again. I miss it. It was a lot of fun, and I think that's one of the best ways to meet uh, some more local people, and I've been thirsting for that. Foiston. Foiston. But, yeah, that's where my mind's at. That's why I'm a little not focused tonight, I feel like. I'm just kind of thinking about all the stuff I need to get working on. Uh, yeah, I think I'm just uh, trying to draw a, a female, and I'm terrible at this, and so that's why my mind is also all over the place. <laughs> It's looking a lot better than it, than when you started, man. But I mean, that's just how drawing goes. <laughs> I, can't I can't tell that was an insult or not. Well, I know I might like, be <laughs> better than it did before, but I mean, the drawing was less done before, so that just makes sense. Well, it looks a lot better than I thought it was going to end up looking. That's all I'm trying to I say. I know a couple of the young kids at my work. They'll, I don't know if I mentioned this on here, but they always say something and go, "Hey, that actually worked." Hey, that actually looks cool. Hey, that's kind of neat. Hey, you're actually right about that. I'm like, why are you always so damn surprised? <laughs> hey, your advice actually worked. Thanks. I actually don't want to slap you right now. <laughs> so anyway, anything else you got on your mind, man? I'm 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 blank. I got nothing. I got nothing else left to give. Uh do a drawing challenge. Bam. Do not do drawing challenges. If drawing challenges ex drawing challenges exist that aren't really kind of what you're interested in or they're not tailored for you, 
change them to be tailored for yourself. I think that's that is definitely the lesson. I think we think we've talked about this actually before on a show, probably probably last year on the same time because we're we we're pretty big uh, pushers of the uh, we push people. Okay, that's what we do. We push well, people. We're pushers. Don't don't call us pushers, man. <laughs> we're all about kind of just like you do do everything you need to do and to push yourself to be better at art and stuff. Like you got to get out of your comfort zone. I think that's why challengers are so good, are so great. Uh, when you're stuck in the comfort zone of art, you're not really growing. You're just kind of like doing what you know you can already do. But like a drawing challenge like puts this extra stress on you of like, man, I if I don't feel it on a day, I just don't feel it and I just don't make a drawing. But it's like when you're in a drawing challenge, you're like, um, well, don't get to not feel it today. So let's just see what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, like I already feel like I penciled out something that I'm going to be inking a specific way. And I'm not like that Batman Beyond that I penciled out. Mm-hmm penciled them out to be like heavy on the blacks and I'm going to try something new with my screen tone and just see what happens. And I'm not really sure if I'm going to be happy with it, but uh, it's inked over. So I'm going to go for it. Heck yeah. And there's an undeniable um, kind of aspect of community with drawing challenges uh, that I think is very helpful too. Uh, once again, a lot of what we do is just being behind closed doors, working on our own projects and then, hopefully making time enough to then go tell people about those projects. But drawing challenges are basically a giant show and tell. And uh, that's a good thing. So participate. If you need to change a little bit to be your own thing, do what Jake Parker did and just present it as this thing that exists and everyone should do because it's the coolest. And then before you know it, you're going to have a Take Me to Your Leader Tuesday event that's uh, around the world. So, Right. I do love that the story of sort of how all this got started is kind of a really interesting thing to me because it is like he's just needed a challenge for himself, started putting it out there. Other people were like, cool, can I join in? And then, I don't know, has it been, I think it's been six years now or something since the first one. It's just like. It's, Why at least, man? I don't know. It's kind of insane how gigantic it is now. Yeah. He's going to have corporate. Well, he already does kind of have corporate sponsorships through like art snacks and different. Yeah. And companies and stuff like that. So you never know where it can get you. Participate. Be part of the community. Adapt them so that they can make you a better artist. Don't just use it to disappear down. It. Well, I mean, if you just want to draw and just fill in a sketchbook and, you know, that's all you're taking it as, then, yeah, just have fun with it. But if you want to be a better artist, then use it to help make you a better artist. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. I was just like, do what you want to do. And if you don't want to do what you want to do, then don't do what you want to do. But whatever you do, just do what you want to do. Pretty much. Yeah, that's why we got to get out of here, man. I got <laughs> And don't you ever let anybody else tell you what to do. Except us. So I do want to transition. Okay. Because we are getting, we're getting towards the end anyways. We got like 10 minutes left here. Um, anything inspiring you this week? Um, yeah, How, since you just sprung it on me, why don't you go and I'll grab this thing I just picked up that I'm pretty excited about. Go. Uh, the final episode of an anime of the, that I've been watching aired and it got me pretty stoked. It was a really good, it was a beautiful piece. Uh, one of my favorite things about watching like a good anime is like the, as a whole, it was, it's just like an awesome, like wow, that was a really good, like, the art was awesome, the story was awesome, the pacing was awesome. That person knows how to write a story. They don't just know how to make things that just look cool. But then when it's all three, it just is like, all right, that deserves some attention. And so uh, it's called Demon Slayer, and it just came to an end. And I might, the character I'm drawing here is from that. And I'm actually drawing both of the main characters as a part of Inktober because I'm pretty stoked on it, and I needed some ideas, some stuff to start penciling out. And so... Uh, they're both on the list, but uh, it's really good for anybody who's half and halfer or a all in kind of fan of that kind of stuff. Uh, and you haven't seen it yet, check it out. But it's called it's called Demon Slayer uh, Kometsu no Yaiba or something like that. It's got a whole extra thing on the end. But if you just look up Demon Slayer, you'll find it because that's how we roll. Very cool. Uh, so for me, two things have been inspiring. One. 
was getting out and going and exploring. Like I told you a bit about at the top of the show, that World War II um, outpost I got to go to. And uh, if you want to kind of check out some of those things, because what was inspiring me was just some of the uh, landscape stuff and the architecture built with the concrete and the kind of grass and ocean backing and everything. Uh, very beautiful scene mixed with a very like battle ready armament uh, situation. And it was really cool to walk around in and really inspiring a bit dungeon-esque in times and stuff like that. If you want to see some of the pictures from that, if you go to my Instagram at Mr. Green Draws, mr.greendraws on Instagram, Whidbey Island, starts with a W, Whidbey Island, uh, and my stories highlights is where I have all those. There's like 20 pictures or something from that area. Uh, but that was really enlightening. I'd love to go back there and just sit with a, uh, a sketchbook, maybe do an episode of Drawing Inspiration from there once I get that segment up and running again. Uh, but that was really inspiring for me to kind of be up close on something that I think would work amazingly as a movie set, but was there in real life. Um, that, and then I actually picked this up from the um, comic shop tonight from the weird rack of things that don't quite fit other places. Um, but this cover uh, just really, 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 really grabbed my attention. Uh, I'm trying not to, I don't know if you can see it here, David. Yeah, it looks awesome. Isn't that cool? It's like that, just like brown paper, like brown paper sack with this white and pink printing on it, which I think is beautiful. Um, and then also the recommendation from the guy at the counter, he said that he loves uh, this artist uh, and writer, and that person is Farrell Dalrymple. So, yeah. And then inside kind of looks nothing like that. It's this like... Uh, it's like newsprint pages, but almost like more um, like softer. Ah. And then just kind of this real soft watercolor dreamscape, real thin panels. Um, very interesting stuff that I'm excited to dig into. Uh, but just kind of flipping through it um, was very inspirational to me to kind of see what people are doing uh, that isn't the mainstream. So I think I'm going to have to put this one under the microscope for read more comics. It's called It Will All Hurt. So it's obviously an uplifting book. <laughs> but yeah, that's what I've been thinking about, man. Comics and World War II. Right on, man. Yeah, homie. Any parting words of wisdom? Uh, yeah. Um, so I got this story. Okay, let's hear it. Um, Whenever we were getting married, uh, we, mm -hmm. were at this, we were at this bar, oh. and uh, this guy was up on stage, and he was singing this cover to a song that we loved, and uh, we were like, man, this is really good. I really love this song, and I love this way this guy sings, so we were like, hey, do you do weddings? And he was like, yeah, I'm actually, um, like, I'm a judge, too, and I can do your wedding. So we actually hired the same guy to marry us as we did to sing the songs at our wedding, mm -hmm. because he could do them both. Uh, turns out he got there. He was kind of horrible, actually. Like, completely ruined everything. And so in the end, the moral of the story is uh, don't book a judge by his cover. <laughs> I knew we should have ended early. <laughs> yep. And there's all the thumbs downs. Yeah, we just got 14 thumbs down. <laughs> not even 14 people watching. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know, those people kept getting off and on again. Just right, oh, right, right, right. Yeah. And then they, they caught the middle of my story. If they didn't catch the whole story, though, they wouldn't know how just great, freaking great that was. I don't even know you could click a middle finger, but they gave you a middle finger up. Middle finger up or down? No, it's definitely up. Way yeah. up. Yeah. I don't yeah. think they liked it, man. Man. That's uh, that's harsh. That's they one of my, that's one of my best jokes. ones. They said your dad jokes are rough. <laughs> Is that a dog joke? What? He's said bro. Oh, it's not a joke. There's no more jokes. <laughs> There's no more jokes. No jokes. <laughs> All right. Um, I think that is uh, that's your cue to do the sign off. Oh, it says uh, Tyler Blake Art said there are a couple of small ones in Eastern Washington too. When you're talking about the con stuff. Yeah, man, we should get together and draw soon, Tyler, and, and talk about some of those. Maybe we can do some cool stuff like uh, carpool to some of those and 
and stuff like that, man. That'd be cool. Cause then you start finding some of those small ones. I, I've said it before on here. I, I think, um, uh, that is kind of where I don't where, where good comic cons are going is back to those smaller ones, not the giant, um, you know, movie conventions, but those are still fun and everything. I'm excited, um, for planet comic con and such, but at least here, the one in Seattle, the like Emerald city and ACE, those are just such huge ones that I'd still like to go to at some point, but I want to, I want to get down on some of those smaller conventions. So, man, we need to talk soon, Tyler. Get it together. Once you got your book going, Kickstarter or whatever, we'll get out there on the scene. Hey, thanks for stopping by, Salazar Art Nation. You're watching 48-Hour Art Check at the same time. So many art checks, so little time. Those guys do rock. That's where we kind of got a bit of the progress, problems, and plans portion of our show. It's from the 48-Hour Art Check, so you guys got to check it out and head on over there. Uh, they might have something intelligent to say. Um. Yeah, right. He said he caught Don't Book a Judge as he came in. So he's going to have to rewatch the whole show to make sure he, didn't, he doesn't miss that joke because it was comedy gold. It's not, it's not. My, my favorite part is that I was casually telling that story and I could see the look on your face of like, this this isn't how you got married. This is not happening. And like, Halfway well, through, I was just like, <laughs> it's the dad joke tone. <laughs> it was rough. All right, man. Uh, we appreciate you guys for joining us. Um, David, when you're not here on YouTube, uh, where can we find you? Where are you going to be busy on Inktober? Uh, you definitely want to catch me at Art of Mr. Fleming on the old Instagrams and then Mr. David Fleming on Facebook. Art of Mr. Fleming, is that's it. Check me out on Instagram. I'm going to be honest. It's where I participate the most. It's where I comment back the most. It's where I hang out. I, Facebook exists, but and I will comment back, and I'm all about it, but I'm definitely putting in the work over on Instagram. So art of Mr. Fleming. Very cool. Uh, for myself, when I'm not here on YouTube, which I'm here a bit more often these days, because on Wednesday you'll find another episode of Read More Comics. That'll be episode seven, which means there's six for you to check out if you haven't seen that yet. Um, so if you need to find your new favorite comic book, look no further than Read More Comics. Uh, but anyway, when I'm not here, you can find me on Instagram as well. Very active there. Um, it's Mr. Green Draws, mr.greendraws, and I have a an extensive link tree there. Um, also down below here and in my link tree, you're going to find a link for our newsletter for idratherbedrawing.com. That's where we're going to keep you informed on um, new episodes of shows or uh, new uh, conventions that we're going to, new books that are coming out. When we have something big and important to share in our artist career, um, that's the best place to find it is in that newsletter. So to kind of help promote that and try to get some more email signups uh, for that newsletter, uh, halfway through October, we're going to send out a newsletter and draw for a free t-shirt. Uh, I'd rather be drawing t-shirt for somebody out there. You can pick your size, your color, your style, all of that, and it will ship to you for free. So that's all I've got. I sure do appreciate you guys for stopping by to check out our art check. And if you're out there working on your art, find a, a kind of bill of buddy and start an art check and, and keep us all informed on your progress because we're interested. All right. Thank you, everybody. Anything else, David? No, I think that's uh, time for the pieces.